A review of Ad Infinitum, pasteable horror in the setting of the First World War. The game tells the story of a German soldier, whose mind rushes between his parents' house, full of sinister secrets, and trenches with bunkers, which are inhabited by bloodthirsty creatures. The plot of Ad Infinitum is full of double and hidden meanings, metaphorically putting their protagonist's experience into the most nightmarish forms. Mix it with the horrors of war, a family problems, the tyranny of grandfather and father, rivalry with his brother, and mother's depression. The scriptwriters were too carried away with allegory, as a result of which it is quite difficult to get to the essence of the story. However, this is normal for psychological horror. The only question is whether you are ready to spend your time and effort to understand what is happening. Structurally, the game is divided into two parts. The first is the exploration of the parents' mansion, which has many corridors and halls, locker doors, notes and puzzles. This is one might say a calm part, where you don't have to worry about monsters, carefully study the environment, enjoying the background and bind. Also there are a couple of rather creepy moments here, and rustling and screams somewhere behind the walls will not allow you to completely relax. Most of the worries that the protagonist will face are searching for the code to the safe, creating exit to destroy a metal chain, setting up a music machine and so on. These episodes turn at infinitum almost into a quest. Meanwhile, from time to time the game throws a soldier out of cozy home into the cold trenches of the First World War. And here you won't be able to indulge in melancholy for long. The whistle of bullets and the roar of explosions reminds you of a merciless meat grinder and infernal monsters force you to act carefully, fearing for your life. Yes, in At Infinitum you have to fight not with enemy soldier, but with monsters that require a special approach. So blind creatures react to sound, so you need to bend down and move silently if it's possible. Also trying to not catch the cans hanging here and there. And to hide from the four-legged creature, which barely fits in the trench. Dogouts dug out in the walls and covered with fabric will help. There are no combat situations in both encounters, even through the hero acquires a pickaxe fairly soon. Unfortunately, this tool only serves to destroy fragile wards blocking the path, while powerful enemies are required to entire run away or if the situation locks the protagonist in the area, look for objects that will help hide their attack. Boss fights are also notable for the fact that they give you a choice, usually to execute or pardon the defeated monster, if influences the development of the story. Ad Infinitum is not a boring game, the narrative is captivating, also it is not always possible to understand what is happening, and the periodic change of scenery the gameplay pace allows you to shake yourself up. However, the experience follows the technical state of the title, the enemy can get stuck in some object, and the plot trigger may not work, which is why the player will spend an hour not to understanding what to do and until he realizes to reload the checkpoint. And the author should have done something with brightness, it is sorely lacking, which is why the doors match with the walls and plot important objects are hidden in the dark. This may have been done to give the game some atmosphere, but it ends up being awkward. Horror fans can be recommended to pay attention to Ad Infinitum, but if you should understand that this is not Silent Hill, not Amnesia or Outlast, if you don't have high expectations for the game you can quite enjoy it, and after completing it you won't regret the time spent.